The WordPress REST API provides a uniform interface for interacting with the data in a WordPress site. In this lesson, you'll learn how to use the REST API to fetch data from your WordPress site. You'll discover three internal options for making REST API requests, and then use them to perform a GET request to fetch some public custom post type data. If you completed the Introduction to WordPress Plugins module, you built a plugin that registers a custom post type called Book. If you skip that module, you can download the main plugin code from the GitHub repository by clicking on the Bookstore plugin link. Once you have the plugin installed and activated, open the main plugin file in your code editor. You will notice that one of the arguments passed to the register post type function is show in rest. This argument is set to true, which means that the custom post type is available to the REST API. This also means that if you browse to the REST API's book root, you will see the custom post type data in the response. If you take a look at the register post type function reference, you'll see a few additional arguments that can be used to control the REST API response. For example, you can change the REST based argument to change the root that the custom post type data is available at. Given that you would expect to be able to fetch more than one book from the book root, it would be a good idea to change the rest base to books. So we can say rest base books. Doing this will allow you to make requests to the books root to access books via the rest API. Let's say you want to add a page in your WordPress dashboard that fetches the books and displays a list of book titles and permalinks in a comma-separated list. To start, you might add an admin submenu page to the books menu using the admin menu hook and the add submenu page function. Then you could create the bookstore render book list callback function, which would output the HTML for the admin page. Now, if you browse to the dashboard and click on the books menu, you will see the new submenu page called book list. Clicking on that link will take you to the page with a Load Books button and a text area. Now you could add functionality to the Bookstore Render Booklist function, which fetches the booklist via PHP and make the button trigger a page refresh. However, for a smoother user experience, you'd like to use some JavaScript and the REST API to fetch the book data asynchronously and populate the booklist without having to wait for a full page refresh. In the Introduction to WordPress Plugins module, you learned how to enqueue JavaScript file in your plugin. Because this functionality is being added to the admin dashboard, you need to set up a separate WP enqueue script function call hooked into the admin enqueue scripts hook so that the JavaScript file is only loaded in the admin dashboard. First, create a new JavaScript file in the plugin directory to handle the admin JavaScript. We'll call this one admin bookstore.js. Then add the following code to the main plugin file to enqueue the JavaScript file for the dashboard. We'll start with add action, admin in Q scripts, and we'll define a callback function. And then we'll create the function and then use WP NQ script to NQ the script file. Notice that this code not only enqueues the JavaScript file, but also specifies an empty dependencies array, a version number, and that it should be enqueued in the footer of the HTML page by setting that last argument to true. 
You can read more about these parameters in the WP and Qscript function reference under the parameters section. You could now test that it's enqueued correctly by adding a single alert to the admin bookstore.js file, and then refreshing any the admin dashboard page. Once you're sure it's working, remove that line from the file. Since the REST API was added to WordPress, it has included a Backbone.js REST API JavaScript client for making direct requests to the WordPress REST API. This client provides an interface for using the REST API by providing models and collections for all endpoints exposed through the API. To ensure that your JavaScript code is able to use this REST API client, you need to add it as a dependency to your NQ JavaScript. The third argument for WP script is an array of dependencies, and you can add WP API as a dependency to your script function call to enable the REST API client. This will ensure that your plugin's JavaScript is only loaded after the REST API JavaScript client is loaded, and so that you can use it in your plugin. You'll want to start by registering a click event handler for the button. So let's find the button ID. That's bookstore load box. Then in our JavaScript, we can say load books by rest button is document get element by ID and pass in the bookstore load box. Let me just say if the button does exist. Then we will add an event listener to the button. And we will listen for any click events. And if a click event is fired, this is the callback function for that event. And then inside here, we can do something. Then inside the event handler function, you can use the WP API client by accessing it from the global WP object to create a new collection of books. So we can replace this and say const all books equals new WP API collections books. At this point, all books is simply an empty collection, so you will need to fetch the books by calling the fetch method on the books collection. So all books fetch. The fetch method returns a promise, so you can chain the done method to handle the response and implement a callback function which will accept the response from the API request. So done. And then set up a callback function. Make this one anonymous, and it should receive the books from the response. Now you can loop through the books using something like the for each method to access each book individually. So books for each. This one has another callback function book. And can do something with each book. Finally, you can add the book title and permalink to the text area. First, you need to create an instance of the text area before the for each loop, and then append the values to the text area's value property inside the for each loop. So the text area's ID is a bookstore book list. So we can say here before the loop, we can say const text area document get element by id bookstore list and then we can say text area value and the book title and a comma and then append the book concatenate that with the book link and then concatenate that with a comma 
and a new line return. Your final code will look something like this. Switch back to the custom book list admin page and click the loads book button to see the list of books appear in the text area. Since the inclusion of the block editor in WordPress 5.0, the WordPress fetch API package has also been made available to make REST API requests. This package is a wrapper around the browser fetch API and provides a more modern and flexible way to make requests to the REST API. To make use of the fetch API, you can update your plugin's JavaScript dependencies to include WP API fetch. You can either remove the WP API dependency or add WP API fetch as an additional dependency. Next, add a button to the actions area of the form to trigger the new fetch request. So for this case, we'll just copy the load books button and turn it into a fetch books button. As before, in your bookstore.js file, set up an event listener on the click event of the new button. At this time, use the API fetch method to make the request to the REST API. So here we have the button variable and the event listener on the button. So then we can call the API fetch method on the WP object. And we'll pass in an object path property pointing to the REST API endpoint. Notice how you pass the path to the book's endpoint in an object to the WP API fetch function. This is more flexible than using the Backbone JS client, which requires you to use a specific collection to access the books. You can chain a then method to handle the response. This is similar to the use of the done method in the Backbone example, in that it returns a promise that waits for the request to the REST API to complete, and then returns the result to the callback function specified. Inside the callback function, you can access the book's object and loop through it using the map method to append the book title and permalink to the text area. So first we can get the text area. And then map through the books object. And append the title and link to the text area. You'll notice that this code is using the arrow function syntax for the callback functions, which is a more modern way of writing functions in JavaScript. If you refresh your admin page and click on the fetch books button, it should now return the books in the list. If you're developing blocks, there is also a core data package available to access data from the REST API. Core data is meant to simplify access to and manipulation of core WordPress entities when developing blocks. It registers its own store and provides a number of selectors which resolve data from the WordPress REST API automatically, along with dispatching action creators to manipulate data. Core data makes use of a number of core React functionalities, so it's best used in a block context. Let's look at how you could use the core data module in a block to fetch books from the REST API. First, using the create block tool you learned about in the introduction to block development module, create a new block called bookstore block. So we'll start by switching to our sites plugins directory. And then we'll run npx at WordPress, create block at latest, and we'll call it bookstore block. This will scaffold the new block with some code for you to edit. Inside the blocks edit.js file, import the use select hook from the WordPress data package, as well as the store from the WordPress core data package. Then you can use these to fetch the books from the REST API in your edit component. 
Use select is a hook that allows you to retrieve data from registered selectors. Use select accepts a callback function as its first argument, where you make use of the bookstore stores entity record selector to retrieve the books from the REST API. These books are then stored in the books variable. Finally, you can update the code to either return an empty component if no books are returned, or loop through the books object and output the book title and link. So here we are returning empty div if there are no books. And if there are books, we loop through the books, outputting a paragraph with an anchor tag, and the anchor tag uses the book link and the book title. Next, run the build step, then activate the plugin and add the bookstore block to a postal page. So we run npm run build to run the build step. And in WordPress, we would activate the bookstore block plugin. And if we add a new post and add the block, it displays the title with the link to the book. Differences between the options. The Backbone JS client is the oldest of the three options, but it is also the most tightly integrated with the REST API. If you need to build admin dashboard pages using the WP REST API, it's a good choice, and far better than using the legacy admin Ajax of PHP endpoint. API Fetch is a great all round solution because you can use it for admin dashboard pages as well as developing blocks for the editor. It's also a more modern way to make requests to the REST API and is more flexible than the Backbone client. For data is best used in a block context as it uses React functionality that's not available outside the context of the block editor. 